Lestat, Lestat, Lestat will forever be etched in my head, y'all. When I tell you that interview with the vampire was probably hands down one of the best series that I have seen this year. Listen, I am not playing any games. This was one of the best series that I have seen, y'all. Let's get into the season finale of Interview with a Vampire because it was definitely one to talk about. And we're actually going to review and recap this entire thing, y'all. When this episode starts out, we are going to see or hear rather this extreme moaning and and it's Louis. He's inside. He's locked up. He's serving his banishment punishment. And let me tell you, when they flipped the script on this whole banishment thing, yeah, they did the absolute most because Louis is actually inside of a bunch of rocks. His body keeps healing. And then it just it's just an ongoing cycle. And you can just continuously hear all of the moaning over and over again. I'm not even going to lie, y'all. Your girl was literally in tears listening to this. I knew from the moment that this episode started that I was going to be crying throughout the entire thing. It was definitely an emotional roller coaster. As Louis telling his part of the story, he talks about Claudia being dead. This is the constant theme that he continues to say, Claudia is dead. We're going to hear Armand chime in and say, that when a vampire starts to scream that means that they are nearing the end and Louis is like I don't remember screaming I don't remember screaming if I had that type of energy I would have just you know I would have lit myself on fire basically as Armand continues to tell his story he talks about how he was the defeated vampire how Santiago had outwitted him how Santiago had changed all of these things with the theater how basically Santiago had taken Taken over and now he was just this underling but that you know he basically was determined to free Louis so he then switches out the body for Louis's body so he takes Louis body and one of the fledglings bodies and he switches them out and that's how Louis actually escaped and of course Armand has left his blood in there and when Louis tastes the blood he knows that it's Armand's blood and he just keeps saying like why would why why you know I am dead Claudia is dead like this is just his constant theme throughout the uh, entire first half of this episode as he's explaining it to Malloy we then learn that uh, Louis gets mad like he gets really really angry not only does he get so angry that the anger the madness it all takes over he goes into the cemetery and this is when he starts to build his plan about how he's going to get everybody back basically he is going to get Santiago and the rest of the people the rest of the vampires I mean, pretty much at this point, Louis has full blown rage on like he is so enraged by everything that he's just killing and killing. And, you know, that's not even really Louis style to be out here just killing like this. You know, he likes the animals and stuff. You know, he one of those tame vampires. But in this particular stage that he's in, he doesn't even care. When I tell you that you can see these bodies just starting to pile up and pile up as they're laying inside of this crypt, you're just like, dang, this many people actually visit the cemetery because where are you getting all these bodies from? But he continues to have the hallucinations. He's talking to the people that he's already unalived. Meanwhile, while Louis is putting his plan together, while he literally is putting Putting together a pretty darn good plan, I must say, throughout all of this madness. You hear Armand literally trying to speak to him, trying to talk to him, pleading with him to leave Paris. He even says at one point, like, just go ahead and leave. Don't worry about me. And Louis's like, I ain't worried about you. And I just about fell out, y'all. <laughs> like, this episode was pretty sad. And I was crying through some parts of it because it was kind of emotional. But there were some parts that actually made me chuckle, that made me laugh as well and this was one of those parts because in my mind I was thinking the same thing like ain't nobody thinking about you Armand like right now I am trying to get some get back and you talking about
about you. But that just goes to show how selfish the character Armand really is and how arrogant he really is. Like throughout all of the things that Louis is going through, he still is trying to get this sympathy. He still wants to play the victim. So anyway, y'all, eventually Louis decides to answer Armand and he asks him some very specific questions. Did you save me? And did you pull me out of the wall? And Armand says, yes. You know, so immediately Louis goes back to these traits that he always has, which is to save these men folk that he find himself in love with. And he tells him, you know, make sure that you don't return back for curfew. You know, make sure that you are not on time. So he pretty much is letting him know that something is about to go down. But once again, I really hated that Louis felt the need to save Armand. Like he has turned on you. He literally has betrayed you multiple times at this point, but yet you still find it in your heart to forgive him. Y'all Louis is a special soul because I don't know, no vampires who are this soft hearted. So anyway, Malloy asked him the same question that I'm thinking, like he's already betray betrayed you. So why are you still trying to save him? Like, why did you still try to warn him? And, you know, Louis kind of answers in this matter of fact way, almost like he felt an obligation to because he's already fallen for this whole game that Armand continues to play. Armand plays the victim so well that, I mean, I guess you can't help but get caught up in his little web of deceit and lies. So anyway, at the same time, we're going to see that Malloy is direct messaging Raglan James and he's asking him for something. It doesn't say exactly what he's asking him for in this particular scene, but he asks him, does he have it? And he tells him that he'll have to look for it. So it looks like there is something very specific that Malloy is wanting or needing in order to continue on with his interview. So anyway, y'all moving forward, you know, we can continue to hear Armand's side of the story and Armand's side of the story is pretty much as it always is is you know victim 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 blame 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 we don't even have to go into the details of his story to know exactly how he's playing this side of it and what he's feeling and what's going on yada 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 bullshit so anyway y'all turns out that in the night and when the vampires are in their coffin basically all of their senses are kind of detached and this is when Louis takes advantage of it he goes into the theater he starts to pour the gasoline all over the coffins and you know he's created this whole plan of what ifs what if this what if that and then he really starts to execute this plan because he knows that he has the advantage until the sunlight comes up so Louis is really re wreaking havoc on this theater. I mean, he kills six of the vampires by fire, two by a blade, and then he kills another one with a combination of both. And these are the things that he is just telling Malloy because he remembers this stuff so vividly. It's funny the things that Louis can remember and the things that he can't remember. I find that very interesting. But of course, we probably have Armand to blame for messing with his mind in certain ways but Louis has executed this so well y'all I was so mad when I saw what they had done to Claudia's area they had put tweedily deedily dead they had her dress they had all of her journals and Louis proceeds to take all of that because of course he's not going to let it burn up in the fire and this is why he still had the journals from the very beginning where we are seeing them reading through the journals when Malloy is uh, reading all of her journals because Louis actually took all of them back. But one of my most favorite parts was when Estelle and Celeste had to go because I couldn't stand those two girls at all. Like I did not like those heifers, y'all. So when he blew them up, in the, on their own motorcycles and then Santiago is like Celeste Estelle like you know Santiago that he's coming for you next because he is definitely out for vengeance and the way that he executes the attack on Santiago was so calculated because he knew he had to lure him out he knew he had to bring him to him it was pretty doggone genius plan for somebody who was enraged and mad. 
Louis kept antagonizing Santiago. Santiago was in turn trying to antagonize Louis by telling him about what they did with Claudia. And really, I was just like, I cannot wait for Louis to take you out because they said that they took her ashes, used it for eyeshadow and things like that. I'm just like, Claudia really didn't do anything to y'all. Like Claudia really just wanted to be a part of something. She just wanted to be a part of the family. Why did we have to do Claudia like this? Like seriously. So they're going back and forth, back and forth forth and Louis is really really getting to him at this point and when he starts bringing up his past wow when he gets into his head but I guess that's something that he kind of got from Armand and Lestat because he really got into Francis's head and was able to get him and lure him to him so that he could then decapitate him and what I loved about this scene was that Louis didn't waste any time taking off his head as soon as he came up boom it was over with like no talking no games let's just do this so anyway now that uh louis has gotten rid of the coven members now he has to deal with his boo thing his armand he wants to know why armand did what he did he wants to know when he started lying to him and of course armand goes on to tell him you know it was the night of the transformation they were my coven members of 200 years you know all that that mess that Armand is just continuing to spew out. Then we're going to see that Rashiv has brought in the newspaper and he also tells him that he brought in, you know, something that he had asked for earlier. So if you are not aware yet, Rashiv works for the Talamasca. He is also an agent as well. So he's kind of a plant. I always wondered how Armand never figured this out, how Armand never knew this. I don't know how you get to be an ancient vampire and can't see through some of these things but anyway y'all so now Louis wanted to know very specifically did you rehearse this with Lestat were you there helping them with this play and Armand tells them no I didn't rehearse it with them I was in my coffin most of the time and Louis just calls him out on it he's like look so you came over here night after night and, and then Armand was like yes lying to you and he said you couldn't once just come up with a different plan with me and that's the same thing I'm thinking like dude you really could have done something completely different you chose to do this this is what you wanted to do and then he goes on to say that he'll spend the rest of his life making it up to him and Louis is just like no you won't like you can never make it up to me like you literally unalived his daughter Armand like you're directly responsible for it no you cannot make this up so anyway, Louis is going to go and see Lestat, y'all. And it was so funny when Lestat said, or where the gremlin stands, talking about Armand, like the love between them is definitely not lost at all. But Louis goes here to basically let Lestat know what he did and how he feels and he gives it to Lestat and then he does the one thing that he knows will hurt Lestat even more he tells him like I'm not gonna try to take you out because first of all let's keep it real we know that Louis couldn't really take out Lestat if he really wanted to I don't think so not even with this much rage I think Lestat still has the upper hand however what was funny about this entire scene is the way that Louis looks at him the way his postures are when he tells him that he's going to be with him and then Lestat is just like well and then he tells him let's see how long it holds and then he looks at Armand and at that moment I feel like you know that there's something up but you just don't know exactly what it is just yet and of course Malloy has to you know point out the obvious and says an odd phrase what do you think he meant by that and Louis just continues to live in this fantasy world he was like it's obvious he didn't think we would last this long 77 years and as Louis and Armand go on and on about all the places that they've been and how they ended up in Dubai they bring their story to a close and say that's the end of it Malloy closes out the session and says end of session but you can't help but see that Malloy really has something else that he wants to say 
And in true Malloy fashion, of course, he's going to dress it up. And he's like, listen, I got a few follow up questions. And then he starts to ask these follow up questions that eventually leads to the biggest moment that we've been waiting on the reveal of the truth. And he asked Louis about the time that Lestat mind controlled all those men, the the one from the the ones that were in the service and he got them all out of the house. It was like, you know, 20, 30 of them. So if he was able to do that, isn't it safe to say that there was more than one person that could have possibly saved you? And that moment right there is when the realization hit that maybe Lestat is the one who could have saved him. And Louis is just looking kind of stunned, like what in the world? But then when Malloy hits him with the biggest bomb of them all, he pulls out the original play, the original play that was meant to destroy Claudia, Madeline and Louis and who was the director of it all? Lo and behold, Armand's punk self, y'all. Armand was the director of the play and he was involved in it. And Louis was supposed to be dead at this point. And then we also get the revelation that Lestat truly did actually save him. It wasn't Armand. Armand just took credit for it. And the way that Malloy is throwing all of these things out on the table, y'all. Woo! Listen, that was like the best part for me. I was like, okay, and check, mate, boom. Now, of course, Louis is devastated, upset. He ends up leaving, going out of the room. Next thing you know, you hear this big, loud noise. You get a message, direct message from Raglan James to Malloy telling him to get out of there, but he just can't get out of there quick enough because everything is kind of happening fast. And Louis tells uh, Armand, after he jacked him up, tells him like, hey, do not touch him. Do not harm him. Do not unalive him, basically, right? And he tells him like, look, I'm going to send $10 million into your account. I'm going to send a car for you, all of that stuff, and tells him thank you. You know, and at, at this moment, you can tell that he's truly grateful that he's really opened up his eyes and given him the truth, which is what he really needed. Of course, Louis is going to destroy the computer, but he does doesn't realize that the Talamasca has already backed all of that stuff up. But, you know, the computer goes on fire and then we see Louis leave and he's going to go somewhere. And we already know exactly where he's going. We know that he's going to go and find Lestat, which is exactly what he does. And this was one of the best moments, in my opinion, uh, was seeing these two as as toxic as this love story is, as toxic as the love between Lestat and Louis is. You can tell that Lestat truly cares about him and that he really does love him. He just has some issues when it comes to showing his love. And when I say this is probably the most toxic love story I have seen to date, listen, this thing is super duper toxic. But at the same time, you can't help but be pulled into it. You can't help but feel something for Lestat. I mean, at the end of the day, Lestat has always been a character that I really enjoyed and that I really loved watching. Watching. He just trifling. Now, before we get into their whole reconciliation, let's talk about this one little part, which I thought was really cute as Louis gets into New Orleans and he's taking the tour and the guy is telling the history and he's telling their history, Lestat, Claudia, you know, Louis's history. And it's so funny because he says that they were running a voodoo cult and I'm just like, it was so much worse than a voodoo cult. But at the same time, it is cute to know that they have this history there in New Orleans that they left this impact even though nobody truly knows what they really were. Now, Louis is going to spot another vampire that is over there, and he knows that this is going to lead him to where he needs to be, which is to find and make amends with Lestat. Now, when he walks into where Lestat is living, Lestat is playing a fake piano, of course. The living arrangements are crazy ridiculous. Definitely not something that you would be accustomed to seeing Lestat in. His fledgling is got to be the biggest idiot. And when he looks at Louis and when he asks Lestat rather, 
brother who was this and he says Louis without ever looking up his fledging is like this is Louis like he was expecting something totally different so anyway, after the pleasantries between Louis and Lestat, Louis just asks him, like, did you save my life? And Lestat tells him that he I gave you to Armand and he wants to know why didn't he say anything? And of course, in true Lestat fashion, he's like, I don't like to point out my virtues. Plus, I knew that you would figure it out. Even in this moment, Lestat is still funny, still, you know, coming with the comedic relief, still coming with the one liners. I love this part for them. I love this actual scene for the both of them. I feel like it gives them some sort of closure. I love the conversation that they had around Claudia, the way that Lestat has to kind of make amends with what he had done, the way that he had treated Claudia. He says that she looked at me like a father, but I, and he never finished his statement because Louis goes in to hug him. But we all know that Lestat never really truly embraced the idea or treated her like he was her father as Maybe in the very beginning, I would say when he was turning her into a killer like him. But after that, not so much. So I think that that really haunts him. And I, I love the way that they embrace in this moment. I love that they're able to grieve together for once because they're both grieving the loss of their daughter and all of this is happening while there's this big hurricane that is around them but it seems to only be the two of them so next we are going to see a Malloy Malloy actually did not die y'all like not literally anyway because I thought for sure when Armand was left there with him that he was going to tear him to pieces and bump what Louis had to say but instead we're going to see that Malloy actually did write his book he's on channel four he's talking about it the person keeps saying that it's fiction and Malloy keeps trying to tell him that it is not fiction he has sold over five million copies of this book and it is still running up the numbers we all know that the Talamasca had a backup copy for it and of course they are the ones who end up getting the book published for him because they actually talked about that in the earlier part of the season so anyway we are going to see that after he goes back and forth with the host Leonard because clearly they have all of the history with each other. But after he goes back and forth with him, he ends up making a call to Louis. And this is when we find out that Malloy has indeed been turned. So although Armand did not technically kill him, he still turned him. And Louis even apologizes for it, says that he's sorry that you were turned out of spite. But Louis should have known that if he left him alone with him, he was going to do something. But I think Malloy quite enjoys being a vampire as he's talking to him he's going on the hunt at that time he's having a conversation with him and hunting down his next meal all at the same time he asks about the royalty checks where to send them to because they keep getting bounced back he tells them that he needs to get out of Dubai and that the other vamps as he called them are you know looking for him that they're not too happy about this book that they've made and he says that they need to write another book that they need to follow it up with the sequel of course this time they won't have the same editor because they cut too much out of his original book as he says it but that book looked pretty thick I don't know how much more they could have cut out of it but anywho they are talking as if they are old friends you can tell that they definitely have this really good relationship but at the end of the day Louis isn't going anywhere Louis hears everything that the vamps are saying everything that they're talking about and then he goes into his room a room that I'll call a shrine maybe a memory because in Inside of the room, there's this open space with the rocks, the pebbles, which is probably the reminder of him being buried alive. You also see Claudia's dress. You see the photo on the wall of his brother. So I definitely love how much thought they put into this entire scene, that one room alone, and all of the things that happened before that too. Like this entire episode was just shot so perfectly in my opinion but he sits down and he then proceeds to call out all the vampires he say look listen to all you people out there talking ish 
Like, this is my address. Drop the locale on them. Drop the address. Told them, look, told them exactly what to expect and to come see me if you got something to say. So, I mean, that was it. This was definitely a great ending. I loved every single bit of Interview with the Vampire. So sad to see this season ending, but so excited that they have renewed it for a third season. Now, based on an article that was done by Deadline, they do say that the next season is going Going to heavily involve Lestat so I am excited about that because like I said I love the character Lestat and I would love to see a little bit more of him where he's like the primary focus of this next season going forward don't get me wrong I like Louis but Louis is exhausting y'all but uh, this is certainly going to be interesting I don't know how they're going to play it out if it's going to be more like a backstory an origin story or what exactly but however it works out I'm excited to see where it goes from here guys let me know what y'all thought about this season what are your thoughts what did you think about the revelation that Armand truly was exactly who he who we thought he was and that Lestat was the one who actually saved Louis so anyway guys if you like the video make sure to go ahead and like share and subscribe to your girl channel turn on your notifications so that you do not miss out on any of my future interview with the vampire talks and I will talk to you guys later peace